So if you're a male and have a Greek name, like me, but mostly speak with non-Greek speakers, then people are constantly calling you wrong. Okay. Uh, people call me Michalis, but really it should be Michali when they call me. So we've seen a lot about case, no? how some words can change depending on how they are behaving, whether they are acting like he, him, or to him, whether they're behaving like she, her, or to her. And all of this is called case. But in Greek, there is also something called a vocative case. This means a version of the noun or adjective you use to call someone. And this is only for the masculine singular. So this is quite specific, no, what Greek does here, a case for calling somebody. But it's very difficult to forget about because when someone calls Michalis, you hear Michali. When someone calls Grigoris, you will hear Grigori. And we know that masculine names end in S, so we'll be reminded of this often when we hear the names without the S. We have something like this vocative in English too, like we say, O oh Michael, no, for example. This O is a vocative. We use it to show we're calling someone. Or you might have heard it even in another language without realizing. Most people know the Arabic word Habibi, no, meaning like my dear or something like that. And you may have heard Ya Habibi, Ya Habibi. This Ya is just a vocative. So this idea is not as weird as it might sound. Quite a few languages do this. So how would you say, for example, my Grigoris, uh, cooling Grigoris? Grigorimu. Grigorimu, good. This is very common. Grigorimu, Mihalimu. And this isn't just with names, no. You might call someone any noun or adjective. For example, levendis. Levendis means like, how would you translate levendis? Like a good example of a man, <laughs> no? Somebody that might be like tall and strong and good looking and smart and nice and combines all of this, levendis. And, uh, you know, this is often said to somebody affectionately. So if you call somebody levendis, how will it sound? Levendi? Levendi. Levendimu. If the word ends O-S, we don't just drop the S, we replace os with an E, with an E. So for example, what was the word for friend? Philos. Philos, good. And if you call somebody, friend? File. File. So this isn't saying you are my friend, you know, if you say you are my friend, you will say... Ise o filosmo. Ise o filosmo. This is when you use the word friend to call somebody. File or my friend? Filemo. You remember the word for big, like mega? Megalos. Megalos. And if you were to call somebody big, how might it be? Megale. Megale. So you might do this, actually. You know, you might say, like, uh, I agree, big guy, I agree. Meaning, like, you know, what you said is great. Megale, symphono. Psilos. Psilos means tall. Psilos. Psilos. So you might call somebody like Tuli or something, you know, or, you know, giant or something like this. How would it be from Psilos? Psile. Psile. My giant. Psilemu. Psilemu. The word for beautiful in Greek is omorphos. 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 This is uh, like in metamorphosis. Uh, morphos means like form. Form and metamorphosis is your after form, and omorphos, beautiful, means something like well formed. So if you say to a guy, you are beautiful, how would that be? Is uh, omorphos? Is omorphos. But if you call him, like, hey, beautiful, <laughs> how would it be? Omorphe. Omorphe, good. How would you say, my beautiful? Omorphemu. Omorphemu, good. You came back up on the E. Yeah. Omorfemu, bravo. So we have the double accent there, no? Because we have mu. We have the accent on o. Omorfe, third from the end, omorfe. So when we put mu, we come up again on the end. Omorfemu, very good. So this special vocative form, we only have it for the masculine singular, no? If we say to a girl or a woman, for example, beautiful, we will just use the feminine. So how would that be? Omorfi. Good. And my beautiful? Omorfimu. Omorfimu. Do you remember the word for brother? Adelfos. Adelfos. And we said we'll also hear very commonly Adelfos. Adelfos. And if you call brother? Adelfe. 
Adelfe, good. Adelfemu, my brother. What if you call to your sister? Adelfimu. Adelfimu. Now so we just use the the feminine. And what if you call to your two sisters? Adelfes. Adelfesmu. Adelfesmu. And to your two brothers? Adelfimu. Adelfimu. Again, e. No, but spelled o i. So for this vocative, we remove the s, or if we have o s, we remove that and we put an e. But with our male names ending o s, we might use the e, or we might just drop the s when it comes to names. They behave a tiny bit differently. So for example, Yorgos. If you call Yorgos, you would just drop the s. Yorgo. Yorgo. The name Mario in Greek is. Well, I think you can guess. How would you make Mario Greek? Marios. Marios. No, you just put the S for the masculine. Now, if you call Marios, this OS is going to become an E. Marie. 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 So, Greek speakers can hear quite a few versions of their own names, if you think about it. We could have, for example, Marios is waiting. How would that be? O Marios perimeni. O Marios perimeni. We could have I'm waiting for or I'm awaiting Marios. How would that be? Perimeno ton Mario. Perimeno ton Mario. So here we don't have Marios, but Mario. How would you say I'm waiting for the friend of Marios? I'm waiting for Marios' friend. Perimeno ton filo tu Mario. Very good. Perimeno ton filo tu Mario. So we've seen Marios, Mario, Mario. Maybe you know two Marioses, two guys called Marios, and you call them, you know, the Marioses, and you might say something like, you know, I'm waiting for the friends of the Marioses. <laughs> How would that be? Perimeno tus filus tus Marios. So if we were to say, for example, perimeno tus filus tus, their friends, that would be fine. But if we're saying the friends of the teachers, the friends of the Marioses, we don't use tus. No, we have the change. Mm. So give that another try. I'm waiting for the friends of the Marioses. Perimeno tus filus ton Marion. Good. Perimeno tus filus ton Marion. And this ton and the on of Marion, both with the omega, the o, that looks like a w. Good. And then we could say, for example, Marios, wait here. How would we do that? Marie perimenedo. Very good. Marie perimenedo. So we've seen two uses of e, actually, no? To make our orders, perimene, and also to call somebody or to call a male, no? To be more specific. And if you think about it, to call somebody is a little bit like an order, no? You call them to get their attention. Marie psilemu. Filemu. So your name is quite a flexible concept in Greek, no? You can hear many versions of it. Marie, Marios, Mario, Mario. So this isn't just about addressing males, this vocative feature, but also about using masculine words. You might address a male using a feminine word too. For example, if you say my love, do you remember how that was? Agapimu. Agapimu. This is a noun and it's feminine. There's no masculine version, so just arabimu, no? Even though we're speaking to a male, we're calling my love, and the word love is feminine. Or, for example, so, we saw was psihi, like in psychology. So if you say my soul, psihimu, psihimu, no? You don't have to worry about changing that. And I couldn't possibly talk about this vocative question without mentioning the most frequent of vocatives, malaka. <laughs> <laughs> Malakas is a crude word, meaning a not very nice person, let's say. I don't have to go into the logistics of it. But like many crude words, it can jump the line into mainstream culture between familiars, between friends. So friends in Greek often call each other malaka emphatically in conversation to put a point, to get someone's attention, to say something like, Ela malaka, come on, what are you talking about? Tiles. Some people say it all the time. Others rarely, and then others can't stand it at all, so don't throw it around too much. And like I said, it's something you should only use with people you're familiar with. Unless you're having a fight, of course, you can throw it around as much as you like. <laughs> but there we see the word is malakas, but of course when you call somebody, you don't have the S. So that's the most frequent vocative you will hear in Greek. <laughs>